Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at forces, gravity, and newtons. All right, so since the last tutorial, we were looking at unit vectors, and I was saying we needed these in case we want to do project a force along a certain vector. But we're going to start in a simpler way. We're just going to use a couple of cubes in here so you kind of get an idea of how the mathematics ties in with the physics engine within Blender. So the physics engine is bullet physics as you can see in here under this tab right here, fourth tab over. It's the type of physics simulation that's taking place is bullet physics. It's really powerful. It's not, a, it's not exclusive to Blender and it's really nice and a lot of fun. And you notice in here they show gravity as being equal to 9.8. Well there's no unit of measurement indicated here which you know is kind of an issue for me except if you've seen earlier tutorials, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go over here to this tab right here, or not the scene tab, this tab for the scene, and notice down here under units, by default the program shows as none and degrees. And since we want to do science and engineering type work, and the general world standard is in the metric system, or it's the international system of measurement, system international. So metric and radians will convert it to. So we prefer to work in radian angles of measure and with metrics. So then when we go back over to this tab here, then we come down here and now it shows gravity as 9.8 meters per second squared. So that really means the same as 9.8 meters per second per second. Now sometimes you'll see it written like this. Let me get my brush up here again. Sometimes you'll see it as a lot of times 9.8 meters yes, that's an M meters and then see, instead of per second so slash second squared it'll just say meters S minus 2. Right? So that just is the same thing. That would be the same as bringing the second squared term down below underneath like this. And then that would go away. So 9.8 meters per second squared is what that's really all about. Okay, and then, all right, let me get rid of that. But where that comes into play is in all of these objects when we specify forces. Blender is so cool and fun. At least ah, I think it is. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've been using um, different things to move the missile. We apply a movement, right? So let's go look at the logic book in here for these two cubes that I have set in the scene real quick. So under the game logic for this cube, oh, this one here actually I have it set. I'll show you right in here I'm applying a force to this cube and one of the things you can apply things like location and forces torque linear velocity angular velocity we're going to use a force in this case alright so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to show you how these forces come into play and it just so happens that I know how this kind of works out so I'm just going to give it an arbitrary number I'm going to say 25 for a force in the Z direction I have the global axis so I know it's moving up but before I get started I'll show you a couple other things that I have set in here but let me run it first I'm going to press P to start it they both fall to the ground and that's forces tied to my up arrow key so when I move it it just moves them both up out of the way and if I let go of the mouse I mean let go of the keyboard they just fall right back down to the ground like this. Okay, so what I'm doing is what I want to try and do is always balance my forces, or at least I want to know what my forces are doing at any particular time. I don't want to just give a force, just like I did right there, an arbitrary number of 25. Well, what's that mean? All right, so what we want to do is we want to be very specific. So when I added this cube into the scene, these are just default size cubes. Like, for instance, if I was to add another cube up here, you'd see it's same size cube as the others all right a little closer so it looks bigger but it's not and when I added to the cube to the scene I also for each one of these cubes I went into the physics tab over here and I turned them into rigid bodies and more importantly I left the mass set at equal to one I mean and the same with this one I turned it into a rigid body and I left the mass set at equal to one well basically what I'm trying to do is find these two objects themselves have a force and it's the force associated with the acceleration of gravity so right over here we 
we're working in this metric system and so we don't think you know in the US standard we use 32 feet per second per second but in the international standard it's 9.8 meters per second per second All right so in order to calculate the force the force is for an object is the mass times the acceleration you know the term f is equal to ma so what i'm going to do is because this is these are specifying all we're doing is specifying a mass for each one of these but that's not specifying the weight weight and mass are completely different so i'm specifying a weight a mass but in order to get the weight of this object in the international system of measurements then i have to multiply it times the acceleration of gravity so we have to multiply 1 times 9.8 meters per second squared and what that does that gives me a weight and that weight being in this case for this object here is going to be 9.8 newtons big N like that so newtons and this is a weight right versus something using something like pounds or ounces right so this is the weights that we're going to use so I know that this object weighs 9.8 newtons because it has a mass of 1 and has this acceleration of gravity. We can actually change these gravity acceleration terms if we want, if you want to use it for the moon or Jupiter or something like that, and you want to have a different gravity. So this weighs 9.8 newtons here, and then this object up here also weighs 9.8 newtons. So that's its weight, and that's really the total force of these objects. So if I multiply these together, I mean, if I add these together, that's going to be 18 19.6. 19.6 newtons is going to be the total weight of these two objects, or the force, because it's the force determined by the acceleration of gravity on these. All right. So the other thing that I have built in here, you see these little line in here like this? That's a rigid body joint. So if I come up here to the, I mean this one here, I have an object constraint set in here. And the target is this cube up here, cube.003, here's cube.2. I target cube.003, I give it a ball joint, so it's just hinged in the center. I display the pivot, I turn that on so I can see the pivot, and I moved it out of its comfort zone up to right in there, because by default, if I left it at zero meters, it's right there in the center of this cube. And so I'm just going to move it up to, say, 1.1, like that put it up there in between those two. So it's basically like a little, think of it kind of like a, a chain or a swivel that's hooked these two objects together. All right. And with those together, then if I move this object, if I apply a force to this object, let's say if I apply a force in the x direction, it's going to drag this object along after they settle on the ground. I'll show you here. In fact, I'll do that. I'm just going to take this object here. I'll go get the forces. Instead of applying any force in the z direction, I'm just going to apply some arbitrary force, say 30 newtons of force in this direction, or in the x direction in this case. So when I start it and I press the key, you're going to see it's going to push it over and see how it's dragging it. I just keep holding it and it's dragging it out of the way. Let me start that again. All right, so I press, so I move it and it's see how you can see it's hooked together and I'm moving them I'm just pressing pressing and I'm dragging them out of the way by applying that force it's so very powerful so but what I really want to do is I want to balance this force out in the Z direction and I want to be able to lift it up so in this case where is it there's my 30 I'll turn that off so I'm not moving it in X but I want to move it in Z positive Z so I said the total weight on this was 9.6 plus 9.6, 18, 19 point, I mean 9.8 plus 9.8 is 19.6 newtons is going to be the weight. So I want to counterbalance that with, say, a force of maybe 19.6 newtons. Now remember, this is really a negative weight downward because of the acceleration of gravity. So I'm going to counterbalance it with this value of 19.6 newtons upward in Z and see if we can lift it up. Theoretically we should not be able to lift it up. It should just sit there flat 
on the surface because I'm applying an equivalent force upward from this object and since it's connected to this it's got to lift both of them off the ground. All right, so I'm going to run it and press my up arrow and let's see what happens. Well you can see it's actually lifting it just barely but because I've just, I'm just applying enough force so something's not quite right. So this comes down to the precision of the physics engine in some cases. So let's go see. I'll go back to the default view and I come back over here to the scene tab. I always get this is the world tab, sorry. And then don't notice down here in the physics steps, this max is five where it's set. Well, I'm going to set this sub steps up. I'm going to crank that up to its max of five. Now, that's going to require more processing power. But now let's see what happens when I do it this way. I run it. Let's say I'm pressing the up arrow key. And now you can see it's sitting there. It's Let's go zoom in. Let me see. Let's look at it in ortho mode. All right, we'll move it up and zoom in. All right, press P. Oh, there I can't see the ground there, but we'll kind of we can eyeball it, and you can see it's. Let's see if it can actually drag it up or if it gets stuck. So it's not quite well, and that may be because in this case the uh, it they're representing gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared but I have a suspicion that they're using a more precise number and that number typically would be more like this a lot of times you'll see gravity is 9.81 or 9.83 or something like that so there's always a little bit of play between the two because precision within the computers comes into play how well they do the calculation how precise the floating point library is they're using what numbers they're using etc cetera, etc cetera. so so when we're using these kind of physics engines you have to kind of tweak it a little bit to make the simulation work the way you want it because we're not using a high precision numerical library to do this however we can become very close but the way to do it is knowing what we're looking for in the first place and then and then we can make our simulation very close to what we want so we would see up you see it's just barely moving it so I'm really close not sure you know if it's exactly that but it kind of gives me an idea so some maybe I'd have to tweak it just a little bit to balance that out or maybe they do something with the hinge that's added in there it's hard to say but it kind of gives you an idea and that's the way we want to work within the game engine and even within blender internal when it becomes more interactive is we want to be able to you know add the forces in the proper manner and in this case we're doing it we're counteracting it based on the acceleration of gravity okay well that's it for this lesson and i'll see you in the next lesson